love that you love the I see in the chat that love the background jazz. Yet we wanted to make sure this was a gentle introduction into today's cafecito. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We're going to be going over using AI with elevator pitches with our amazing speaker, Bianca Negron. A quick introduction of ourselves. My name is Angelica Juarez, and I'm the program manager for the Mono Project. We have Ivoni here as well. I'll let her introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our cafecito. I'm Ivoni Watson, the admin coordinator with the Mono Project. Great. And we have Bianca Negron here. A quick introduction of her. She has 15, over 15 years of experience specializing in personnel management, including supervision, training, and recruitment. Ms. Negron is an international consultant and certified coach passionate about developing personal and employment brands. And again, enhancing and empowering new leaders, professionals, and entrepreneurs. Um, her personal touch and creative approach to management utilizes inspirational leadership, the mind sonar tool, and coaching techniques. And this really does set her apart. Her intuitive nature, combined with her extensive experience in personnel management, allows her to successfully guide professionals and entrepreneurs in developing individual, individual careers, strategies, and goals, and of course, identifying their personal brand. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Bianca so she can also give a quick overview of herself and what today's presentation will entail. Perfect. Thank you for that introduction, Angelica and Ivoni. Thank you for um, giving me this opportunity to present this great topic. So I'm here sharing with you the screen, and we're going to be today talking about how to craft compelling elevator pitches. And we're going to use tool that maybe some of us have some experience, but I think that mostly everyone has heard, you know, about AI. And if you haven't used AI yet, you might be asking yourself why it's so important, why people are using it, or maybe some people are afraid. But today we'll take a look a little bit on how you can take advantage of it. So the first thing I want to do is to do um, a little bit of a dynamic. I want you to visit menti.com. And I know that in the chat, you're going to find the link. Um, they're giving me that support. You're going to see a link in the chat and the code whenever you access that link. You can do it by phone or you can do it on your computer. You're going to go to menti.com. And as soon as it opens, you're going to type in the code that you're seeing on the screen or in the chat. OK, so I'm going to give you a few seconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to menti.com. So we can start doing a little bit of what you're going to be learning today, especially I, I will say this is for me. I want to learn a little bit about you. So if you're here and you're seeing the screen, um, what I want you to do is at least give me a thumbs up so I can be sure that you're here, that I'm seeing you. OK, let's see. Everybody's here. OK. Perfect. Perfect. So if we're here, I'm going to click on the next one. And what I want us to do is to share your name, what state you're from. And if you're currently working, um, share with me your profession, OK? I'm going to give you a few minutes. I want to get to know you. Usually, this will help me a lot to personalize a little bit more some of the examples that we're going to be doing today. Let's see. Share your name, state, profession. Let's see. And if you are connecting right now, um, know that in the chat, you can find all that information. Okay, Yvonne, Virginia, admin, HR coordinator, Cindy, Kentucky, undergraduate and urban fellows, Karina, California, program associate, Jorge, New Jersey, urban community engagement fellow, um, Victoria Pedrosa, Washington, program associate, perfect. Do I have someone else that I'm missing? Okay, Stephanie, North Carolina, North 
Caroline Wright, Program Associate, Angelica, California, um, Program Manager. So I think that it's kind of like everyone that we have here, kind of. Maybe I'm missing two. Okay, you can keep participating. And now I want to go a little bit um, deeper and get to know you. This will help me a lot in the other things that we're gonna be working today. So what is the purpose of your elevator pitch? Just think that today you're gonna learn how to do it. And if you have to do one, what will be that target? What is that purpose? You're looking for a job, promotion, an internship, you wanna brand yourself or any other, any other reason you would like to have or develop, craft your elevator pitch. Or maybe some of you might say just a little bit of everything that we see here, a little bit for a job, maybe that promotion, maybe looking for other opportunities, brand myself. Okay, so far, um, branding is what I have. I'm going to be making some notes, okay? Because that will change the game whenever we're using AI. Okay, promotion, we have one and job. Let's see, job, and then we have promotion. Okay. Okay, so everybody kind of in branding. Perfect. So do you have already an elevator pitch prepared? Yes, no, to some extent. Maybe you have tried. What happened to my screen in the back? Like everybody went blank, right? <laughs> Did I do something? <laughs> that's That's interesting. Right? Okay. Like everybody. <laughs> okay. So, so far, no one has um, an elevator pitch. Okay. So now choose the emoji that best symbolizes the message of that elevator pitch that you would like to create. Will you like to have an elevator pitch that is powerful, persuasive, positive, and empathetic, or more professional? Hmm. Okay. So, so far we have a little bit of persuasive. You'll see why this is so important whenever we go to AI. Okay. So we have persuasive um, and professional, then persuasive and then positive and empathetic. Okay. So have you used AI? So far one, yes. One no. Okay, five yeses. Okay. Later on, you let me know um, how you have used AI. I'll give you some space so you can share. Or if you want to share through the chat, that will be great because I can um, read those. Okay. So thank you for participating. I'm going to go back to my presentation so we can talk a little bit. Let's see if this background goes away. That's interesting how everybody went into the darkness. Um, okay, so here we go. Let's talk a little bit um, about the objective today. We're gonna be working and understanding the elevator pitch, especially the anatomy, right? On how we can write that compelling pitch. Also, how we can create that, how we need to tailor it to different audiences, depending on the target that you have. And sorry, and how we can use the power of AI, but ensuring that that message really is about us. And we need to be really aware in how we're gonna be doing and using AI. And today we're gonna be talking and I know we will have time to do some real examples. So elevator pitch, why and when? Usually people think that an elevator pitch is only for those who are an entrepreneur and that they're looking maybe to have some funding for that idea. I have worked um, and I have teach entrepreneurship programs. And whenever I have students who need to create their elevator pitch, it's completely different as us that we're going to use it more into branding ourselves. So basically, let's define it. An elevator pitch is also known as an elevator speech or lift speech, okay? But basically, it doesn't matter the name, it has to be concise. It has to have that summary of an idea or maybe something that you can solve 
maybe how you can help someone. And this is the thing. It has to be easily understood by that other person in a short amount of time. Usually, if you go from one floor to another floor, it goes really quick, right? So imagine yourself, how many seconds you might have in order to sell yourself, brand yourself. So usually what you can go online and search is that elevator pitch is between 30 to 60 seconds, okay? That's the ideal length. And you might say, "Uh, uh-uh, I have a lot to say. Um, that's not enough. The more you practice it, the easier it will be. And you can make it every time shorter and shorter, but this is the key about elevator pitches. You need to know yourself, okay? So 90 seconds will be the longest. I will say this will depend on who is that audience, where you are. And sometimes if let's say, I don't know, interviews, you might think I don't need an elevator pitch for an interview. You, you should have an elevator pitch for that interview because usually that question that comes up and say, hey, share a little bit of you with us. That's your elevator pitch. Okay, that's the question that gives you, you know, that action. Okay, this is where I need to do this. So you have a, there a little bit of the definition and the time frame. And I'm going to share with you today a little bit of the anatomy of an elevator pitch, usually what it should have. So if we take a look here, we have the introduction, the problem, the solution, what are the benefits? validation and call to action. You should always have a call to action. You have to tell people what to do, okay? Or what's next. So I'll share with you here. Let me go back. I don't want to give you everything at, at the first glance. So introduction. That's when you need to have a hook to grab your audience's attention. That's where you start having that credibility, that relevance to the listener. And usually uh, um, that introduction, again, will depend on who's your audience and what's your target, what's your objective, okay? If it's about you, start maybe sharing something or go, in, go into your skills of something that you can solve. And I'll give you a little bit of more information on that. So problem, clearly explain the problem or need that you can solve. That's the question that the question that you should answer is the what, what is a problem and make it relatable and you should help them understand how you can solve that problem. Okay. And this is the thing with elevator pitches and also interviews because it comes kind of in hand because we're talking about branding yourself. Don't start talking about you. Okay. It's about what others need. It's not about that you need the job. Okay, I know you need the job. Okay, I know you need support. I know you need maybe that that promotion. But tell me what's in for me, how you can help me. Okay, and you have to look into what's the problem that they have. And how can I solve that? That's the part of the solution. Okay, explain the how, how you can do that what is happening and how you can fix that. What is that unique value proposition, okay? Do you offer, you have innovation? Do you have the skills for this? Have you done it before, okay? This is why I mentioned before that you need to know yourself in order to do this. Benefits, everybody wants to understand what are the benefits that you will give me if I hire you or if I make an alliance with you, or if you're gonna be part of my team. So explain the key benefits, what value you bring to the team. I'm bilingual. I have, um, I don't know, this certification, okay? And because of this, I can do this. Give me the facts, give me the why, okay? Because everybody wants to know the benefits. At the end of the day, your benefit will be made, oh, there we go. Okay, <laughs> um, maybe at the end of the day, your benefit will be the salary. But at the end of the day of that other person is what is my benefit? Are you gonna stay here for the long run? Okay, usually that's one of the biggest benefits or I will say assets that companies are looking for, people that can stay in the company, okay? That loyalty, validation, evidence that support 
your claims. So that's when you can give statistics, testimonials, endorsements, achievements, who you know, who have hired you and we, what you have done. So you need to give me the facts because I don't know them. And that's the moment that you need to add everything. It's like everything in the blender, right? And know when to add them. So the last thing, and it's not the less important, is the most important is call to action. What's next, okay? I gave you all this information about me. I can, uh, you have this problem. I can have the solution. There's gonna be benefits for you. And I have done this before. So if you need me, call me. This is my number. Here's my resume, okay? Um, let's connect on LinkedIn. I'll send you a message. You have to close the deal in a certain way, okay? And that's the call to action. Let me know what's coming, what's coming up next, okay? So whenever we're talking about that elevator pitch, always remember to have an elevator pitch that is short and is clear. You know, usually the biggest mistake that many of us do is that we maybe are doing this job or we are in this industry and we speak this language that other people don't understand. Okay, I used to work um, for the army and in the military, there's codes, right? And there's ranks and, and everything is, it has an abbreviation. And at the beginning I was like, what did they say? I, I don't understand this, right? So one of the things that I used to do as a career counselor for the army was explaining to the soldiers, stop talking like that. Because whenever you go to the real world, people won't understand that number, that abbreviation. So always remember that. Make it, I know we're recording this, um, but usually they say make it um, dummy proof or monkey proof. Easier, better, okay? Because if you have to keep explaining yourself, those 30, 60, 90 seconds are gone and that means that it's not their problem that they're not understanding. It's your problem that you're not explaining it well for someone to understand that, okay? So always have that in mind. Explain who your target audience is. That's everything because the that elevator pitch will change, okay? Also, research. What's their problem What that they're facing and how can I solve that? If you take a look at this, it's kind of like whenever we're looking for a job, right? and we need to tailor the resume. So it's the same thing with the elevator pitch. And you need to sell yourself, right? Through your brand and through your skills, how you can bring a solution. And always remember to describe, and that will be a great um, way to end, what success will look like if they hire you, okay? Really important. I love this phrase from Elevator Pitch, and it says, in a world of elevators, a pitch is everything. It can either take you up or bring you crashing down, okay? So you need to know that elevator pitch and how you're going to address that. So here's the thing, the how, how you're gonna tailor your pitch to different audiences. And we are going to start thinking, what are those audiences? that I might be looking for, searching for. It could be a recruiter or hiring manager, okay? Always remember, not only recruiters recruit, also hiring managers or even supervisors. They have that responsibility and then they share their resume, the resumes to the recruiter, okay? So for them, the question that you, have, that you should have in mind is how can you solve a problem and why you? That should be the focus of your elevator pitch. Maybe another audience that you can target with your elevator pitch is because you need to expand your network, okay? So who are the people that you need to connect with? That elevator pitch, that networking pitch, you can even um, have it written down. And this is the other thing, an elevator pitch, it could be something that you're going to say, but also you can have this written down and spe specifically in this audience of network, that elevator pitch can be that message that you send to someone whenever you want to connect with them on LinkedIn, okay? Why you want to connect with them, okay? That's important. And mentor, maybe you're looking for a mentor, right? 
You can have an elevator pitch for that mentor. Why do you need support? And I will say another thing to have in mind is why you, why them, and how you're going to use your time, your valuable time, why you should invest your time in me, okay? Have that in mind. That could be an also an elevator pitch that you can have and go to LinkedIn and look for a mentor, okay? So when tailoring your pitch for a job or career, okay, you must consider the audiences. What are their interests? What are their priorities? What are their specific needs, okay? Especially if you're looking for a mentor. Um, maybe this person has a strong sense of helping the new generation, right? Um, follow them on social media. Take a look of what they are doing, how they are doing it. Um, and I will say you need to study them in order to make that pitch. And you might be thinking, oh, no, Bianca, I have to do a pitch for every person, every time. Not necessarily. If you have one good pitch, you can just tweak it. Just tweak one or two or three adjectives or action verbs, and that's it, okay? And I'll show you how we can do that, okay? So some ideas on how you can create an elevator pitch is maybe people have an elevator pitch to educate others, okay, on a specific topic and why you're passionate about that. Um, maybe you want to tell a story. Maybe you want to just talk about that value proposition that you're going to provide. Always remember to personalize that sales pitch. You can switch up your pitch. Um, you remember when I was asking you about the message, um, if, it want, if you want it persuasive or empathetic, later you'll see how AI can give you all of that to switch it up, okay? You need to practice um, your pitch and be ready not to have it um, set in stone, okay? But at least to have some bullets in order to know how you're going to connect because you never know maybe what can happen. Um, also, have in mind that whenever you're doing your elevator pitch, where you are, is there more people around you? All of that atmosphere, um, an external maybe um, factors, can play a crucial role in how you're gonna say it or how the other person will respond, okay? So you need to have your strategy and tactic ready um, in order to know how to present this. Try not to use metaphor, metaphors or even jokes and humor. You never know how the other person will um, get that message or twist the message, okay? Be ready to create a wow moment for someone to remember you. Um, appeal to the emotions, but don't try to be like a robot or someone who is acting because it's going to look fake, okay? You need to own this. And if you're going to start thinking all the little things that you're going to say, you're going to have a hard time um, enjoying it, okay? And sometimes the most, I will say, authentic thing is just to go with the flow you know what you're going to say you're not going to be timing yourself okay um so be sure to know the message so it comes out the right way in the way that you really feel it okay you can add facts or stats and for example whenever you're doing a resume um we always recommend to for you to add statistics or even let's say percentages of how many case load you had um, how money, how much money you saved, all of that information can be great. The other day I was talking to my husband, um, he's in the Coast Guard and we were talking about supervisors and he's, he's a supervisor right now. And we were talking about caseload and he told me like, oh, you, you don't have the same caseload like me. And I was like, when I used to be a career counselor, I used to have 300 soldiers that I needed to follow up with them daily. And it was throughout a year and every month I will get more soldiers. Um, so if I talk to someone and they might say, oh, you cannot manage 20 people. Hey, I have managed 300 cases of soldiers whenever they have transition, I can do that. Know your numbers, okay? That's gonna be important. And maybe tap into the fear of missing out. That fear of missing out, we work a lot of that when, um, for example, we do marketing. Um, 
I don't know if you have heard a little bit of what are the pain points, but whenever you're maybe crafting a message, you have to um, analyze what are the pain points. If you don't come to this webinar, you're going to be doomed the rest of your life of not being able to do a compelling sales pitch. You see, you have to tell them, if you don't do this, this is what's gonna happen. So the same thing with the companies, right? Um, I'm the right person because of this. Um, give the facts. And if you do this, maybe you are missing out on this. Okay. And remember, you might go like, oh, no, no, no I can't do that. Is the way you say it. Okay. Take that, um, that ownership, but at the same time, be humble. Okay. Whenever you're um, talking to them. So far, we're doing good. Okay, I'm gonna give you an idea, for example, this is an elevator pitch example um, about someone who's selling something, okay? You see, it's really short, it's divided in three. Here is the hook at first, then they're personalizing this to the audience, and then they're giving them the way to connect and maybe give them the solution. So 60% of workers time is spent on work coordination. That might be why you're struggling with productivity issues. Project management tools can help shorten the time spent on work coordination. I'm a project manager. I have been doing this for 10, 15 years. I'm able to use different tools. These are the tools that I use, put the names, right? Um, and I'm ready to support you. You see? I changed it from a sales pitch that maybe they were trying to um, sell a tool, but I added that I have the knowledge to do that. Does it make sense? You see how short it is? And you might say, do I need to know all of this? You create your own pitches, okay? You're going to tailor it depending on the audience. So let's talk a little bit on how you can adapt your pitch for different audiences. Research that audience, okay? You need to customize your message, tweak it, change it, go to that website of the company or the person, the LinkedIn profile of the person, learn a little bit more. And you need to focus on what is relevant. And it's not what is relevant for you. What do you want? It's what the others need, okay? Always remember that. I think I explained a little bit of how to use the language and examples they understand, okay? Try not to use, um, too many big words of your industry, because this is the thing, whenever we're working, and it's interesting, sometimes interviews, someone is interviewing you, maybe that recruiter, but they have not worked in that department. So they might know some keywords, but they don't know the whole management or how it works. So you need to be sure that they can at least understand you. Highlight shared values. If you see and that's why you need to research the company that has certain values that are important to you. Add that to your pitch. Add that to your pitch. That's going to be important. Other things, address pain points, okay? What is their pain and how you can bring a solution to that pain, okay? You need to feel and have that enthusiastic and passion whenever you're talking, okay? Don't go into a, a zone where... You're the only one who's having that passion, okay? Try to see how the other person is connecting. Be flexible and adaptable in your message. That's gonna be important because if you think that because it's like this, I have to say like this, then we're gonna have a problem, okay? Um, I did a TEDx talk in September and I remember that whenever I was writing the TEDx, because that was really difficult for me, I needed to write it first and then memorize what I needed to say. And I don't, I don't tend to do that. Um, I do things like, like this presentation. I do the presentation and when, whenever we're here, yeah, I go with the flow, right? So it was hard to do that TEDx. And and I learned how to be flexible and adaptable because whenever I was doing the TED, I had some um, slides with no words. It was just a few words, but mainly pictures. I remember that whenever I I, I clicked the clicker, I saw the, the slide and I was like, oh my God, I did not do the Da Vinci story in my head. I'm, I'm 
I'm here talking, but in my head, I was like, I'm not, I haven't done the Da Vinci story. If I don't do the story, nobody will understand the, 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 the objective of the TED. And I was able to squeeze it. Um, and I was able to add other things that were not um, in that paper. And that's the beauty of knowing yourself and knowing the message that it doesn't matter what happens, you're able to be flexible and adapt to the time that you have, to the people that are there or whatever is happening, okay? Um, but in order to do that, you need to learn about yourself. You need to know yourself and know the message, okay? And maybe have a different um, elevator pitches, okay? So you go like, oh, this doesn't mm -mm, this doesn't match, but I, I have this other one, maybe I can tweak it, okay? Provide evidence and results, and I share a little bit of that, and you need to follow up appropriately, okay? It could be, let's connect on LinkedIn, I'll send you an email, or here's my number, you need to follow up. And I think that a lot of us, we don't follow up. That's one of the things that is hard, and it's one of the biggest assets of great brands, to follow up. Um, I went years ago to a networking event and I don't know if I have shared this with you guys, but in that networking event, um, I remember that someone asked me who has, uh, who is more successful, the one who gives out business cards or the one who gets business cards, which one do you think is the most successful? The one who gives to others, his or hers business card or the one who takes home a lot of business cards? Which one? So if you want, you can open the mic or I can, uh, okay, I have someone in the chat. Let's see, gives, okay, Cindy says gives. Someone else? Let's see. The one who receives a lot. Yes. This is why, okay? If you give a lot of your business cards, you cannot control when they're going to contact you and who is going to contact you. But if you get all this business cards, right? I can contact them in my time, maybe in the next day. So remember that following up is really important and you have to have this in mind. How can I manage that follow-up? It's not like, oh, send me an email or no, I will send you the email, okay? I will connect with you on LinkedIn and do it, okay? So always look into that follow-up or call to action where you can have a little bit more control because if you tell them, just send me an email if you're interested, no one will send you the email, okay? Um, and it's not you or the message is that everybody is kind of busy, right? Um, nobody has time. So we need to remember them. Another phrase that I want you to have in mind is in the game of pitching, timing is everything. It's about hitting the right floor at the right time. So that's why you don't need to wait, um, to have a perfect, that elevator pitch. You always have to be ready because you never know when is the right time. OK, you never know um, and you need to be prepared. So let's talk a little bit. And here's where I'm going to spend a little bit more time in the power of AI. So whenever we're talking about artificial intelligence, there's many, 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 many apps and tools right now that use artificial intelligence. And whenever we're writing that elevator pitch, we need to consider the following how we can maintain that accuracy, clarity, and that authenticity of who you are. Because remember, this is a machine putting a lot of words together and it doesn't have your tone of voice, okay? So whenever we're talking about AI, things to have in mind, how to use it, okay? Understand the AI's capabilities and limitations. AI has a lot of limitations and different tools have more limitations than others because some of them are newer than others, okay? So whenever you use any of these tools, look into reading. Is this in beta phase? Is this is the latest version? 
Um, sometimes, for example, ChatGPT, if you pay, you get like an upgrade, okay? So these are things to consider. Um, also, also, provide clear input and guidance. You have to tell ChatGPT what you want. The, the more um, details, the better, okay? Review and edit what AI is going to give you. Why? Because it's not 100% accurate. Even it's not 100% um, written correctly, okay? Usually, if I use AI, I always go to Grammarly. Um, I have Grammarly installed in my computer. And the first thing I do whenever I log in, it's connected and it's telling me what is wrong. Okay. Now, um, Grammarly has a little bit of AI. I don't know if you have used it. Whenever you write something, you can just click, um, like copy. Yeah. Like copy everything. And it gives you like a little pencil and you can't improve it. Okay, so have that in mind. Um, oh, Cindy, yes, I love it too. I love that. I love that. I have even, I think that whenever I write in English, I feel like great because I don't have to be looking into those little details that sometimes I forgot, forget. Um, so it's a great tool. Also, you need to inject that personalization and authenticity. It has to have your voice, okay? Um, especially whenever we're talking about an elevator pitch. Also, verify the facts and information. We don't know if, where they're getting that information from. So, for example, one of the things I did for my TED, um, I went to AI, specifically ChatGPT, because I was talking about human-centric leadership. And I went through Google looking for the founders of that theory or concept, and I couldn't find them. So I told ChatGPT, give me the founders of, you know, of this new concept. And ChatGPT gave me some background. And as soon as he gave me the names, I went to do the checking on Google. So at the end of the day, it's not that I'm using AI to create my speech, but I'm using ChatGPT to get information that maybe is hard to get through Google, but it's giving me the clarity to know where to look that information from, okay? Other things to have that in, in mind is maintain and okay, okay. Perfect, Cindy, you both, ChatGPT. I'm gonna show you some today, others, okay? In how you can um, combine all of those, okay? Some of you might go like, oh no, this is crazy. This is too much. But whenever you get the hang of it, you're gonna save time. OK, um, especially on those days that I don't know what happens to our creativity. It's kind of stuck. You need like a push. So it gives you that. Maintain ethical standards. OK, um, avoid anything that is misleading or false content. That's that's the reason you need to review, test and iterate. Um, it is important to go and double check the different models, okay, that you can use. Whenever you're doing this, if you need to go to a mentor or someone just to have that feedback, please do so. Stay informed and updated on the different um, AI technology, and you need to take responsibility for the final out output. You know, what's the funny thing? I'll share this with you. When I was doing the presentation, I was like, you know what? I want to know what ChatGPT will give me. If I ask ChatGPT, what are those things that I need to be paying attention when I'm using ChatGPT? And you know what? What I have just show you, ChatGPT gave me that. So they even told me how to use ChatGPT responsibly. Okay. It is amazing all the things that we can do. So examples of AI. Here we go. There's this um, tool that you can download into your computer. It's called WordTune. Some of the things that I tend to do is I write something, but I want to change the tune, right? And I was explaining that some of the things that you can do in your elevator pitch is to do that. So you can download WordTune. If you have downloaded Grammarly, WordTune will look kind of the same, okay? This is the only thing. In the free version, I think that you get around 10 or five um, changes in a day, okay? That's the only thing. Another one that I like is Writer Buddy. Okay. Here you can come and do the elevator pitch generator. Okay. 
maybe you have an idea, a core message, you come here and you can do that. Um, it goes straight to what you want. Another one, I don't know if you have used this one. It is really good. Um, for example, I speak Spanish and English and sometimes I'm doing proposals in both. Will but recognize the Spanish too, okay? Uh, because all the chat GPT sometimes don't have that, okay? Or AI. So Quillball has paraphrasing, has writing, has translation, has a bunch of things, okay? It is a good resource. My favorite one, okay? It's called Quick Tools by PixArt. I hope I have the time to give you like a glance, but this is my favorite one, okay? And I'll explain to you a little bit of the reason in a few minutes. And of, co of course, ChatGPT, I will say whenever you're doing ChatGPT login, because all the things that you have searched for, it will be safe there. And if you keep using that same, let's say, content and start looking for more information, you'll have it in that same kind of page, okay? So it's a great way to have that. Um, like I mentioned before, Grammarly, that's where you need to go and double check that whatever you're getting over there matches here, okay? And I will say those are the most important things. Whenever you're writing your elevator pitch, remember to start with a problem, focus on the solution, what is the value and that call to action. What I'm gonna do right now is I want us to practice and I think that I have a few minutes because AI is so fantastic that we can do it really fast. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm going to go here. And I'm gonna go to ChatGPT, I'm here in ChatGPT, and I'm gonna say, um, write an elevator pitch focused on marketing. Let's see, you see the great thing about um, Grammarly, uh, write an elevator pitch focusing on, focusing on marketing. Um, forgetting, let's see. Okay. ChatGPT already gave me. Hello, I am a seasoned marketer with a passion for driven impact campaigns that resonate with audiences and deliver tangible results with a track of record. You see, it's selling itself um, of leveraging data-driven insights to craft compelling, I thread and dynamic, my diverse skills. So this is what we can do. Let's see the, you can see the call to action. Let's collaborate to elevate your brand presence and exceed marketing objective together. And you might say, you know what? Mm. Like I, I need something more so I can do copy paste. Here's the thing. Maybe if you want to be more targeted on you and your brand, you can change some of the key skills that they have added and change it into yours. Or you can give ChatGPT a brief of you and tell them to write you a short elevator pitch. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. ChatGPT gave me this. I copy this and I'm going to quick tools. Why I love quick tools. It has everything. Okay. From here, you can do font generator. Um, you can look for emojis, symbols, word counter, and even to add text to photos. Um, other things. It has AI writer. It works with images. It can convert like for example, JPEG to PNG. You can do the signs here, okay? But I'm gonna do to go to AI Writer. And my favorite one, for example, here you can generate a lot of things. Usually I come here if I'm having rough time finding um, the title of webinars, okay? I come here and I look for that information. I love to come here, edit text. And I'm gonna go to Paraphraser, okay? You click here and I'm gonna click here. Let's see, it's not copying. Okay, here we go. Here what I have from ChatGPT. And I'm going to tell this AI writer that I want it in different tones, friendly, luxury, relaxed, 
let me do this um bold adventurous witty persuasive or empathetic so i can change it so i want this somebody tell me which one will you like um that tone of voice any idea no which one let's see okay professional let's go to professional Okay, so instead of hello, greetings, okay? So here you can see how many words it has. So it will change it. Um, it basically will change certain words. For example, look at the end, let's collaborate to elevate your brands, let's work together to enhance your brand's visibility. And then you can copy this and it gives you different, okay? Look, it gives you different. You can even generate more. But what happens if you go like, okay, I want to change it and let's go um, persuasive. So it will change the tone. Okay. Still the same uh, message, but the tone will change. Um, sometimes I love to come to this one bold because it's like that power Okay, and you can come and get some certain um, words. Um, for example, let, let's take a look at the last sentence. Let's partner up to elevate your brand's visibility and surpass marketing goals together. It's like more a punching line. And sometimes what I do, I copy paste like two of the different tones and I make mine and then I add my information. Does it make sense? Yes? Okay, so other things, if you... Do a chat GPT, um, for example, here, and even I'm going to give you some elevator pitches that I, I asked chat GPT to give me this one. Example of elevator pitch when looking for a mentor. And it gave me this one, okay? It's kind of long, right? But I can do the same thing here. I can come here and make it shorter, okay? And look how short it will give me that. Or I can just go here again to the paraphraser and just ask for a different one. The only thing with um, Quick Tools by PixArt, you're not going, um, you can do that signing and you can um, do the browsing. But here you have content. For example, you can come here and get scripts, everything. Um, if you have um, ideas, here you can do email writer, ideas, size hustle, startup, marketing. Um, look, all of this, slogans, everything. Um, the only thing I will say is to, whenever you do this, come to Grammarly, okay? So let me see something. I'm gonna do copy and then I'm gonna come here and open a new one and I'm gonna do this. And again, I can set the goal here. And basically what Grammarly is doing is setting the audience, um, tailoring it. So the audience is knowledgeable, formality is neutral. And if I click here, you see, it's telling me it's passive voice. I can change that. Again, it's giving me how I can change that. And now the new feature that they have is that you can do here, you can click on this little pen and it says improve it. So they will give me a new option, okay? And I can insert it or make it, again, make it assertive and it can give me more ideas, okay? So far with what I have shared with you, I wanna stop here so far and um, for you to share with me any questions, doubts, what do you think of this? Everybody's so quiet. I'm going to share through the chat um, this one. Thank you, Bianca, so much for walking us through how to use this uh, new technology. Let's see. So we do have some questions that were sent over prior. One okay. of them was, one of them was, how do we create an impactful elevator pitch when we don't have full-time work experience yet or are still students? Oh, that's a great um, idea. That's that's really important. And that's a great question. 
I will say we're going to have to back that up with skills that we do have. Okay. And maybe, um, can you share with me that question again? Let me see something. Um, mm -hmm. Example of an elevator pitch with pitch with no job experience. <laughs> there we go. So in this case, we have Ryan. And again, you might say, why are you going here to do this? This is a great example for you to create yours, okay? Because it's giving you an, an idea of what to bring to that elevator pitch, okay? So it is important that we come out with skills that we have, experiences that we have, things that maybe we have done in the community that will help. Perfect. The next question is, how should we modify our elevator pitch when cold emailing? Hmm. Interesting. I will say, do, do you, am I getting the same questions through the chat? No. Here, I can attach them for you. Okay. So I will say that whenever we are emailing, um, that's going to be interesting. First, we need to evaluate where that email is coming from. Okay. Um, who's the audience, what they need. And we need to have a clear objective of what we want. Because I, I think that it is difficult if we don't have like a, a north, a, a path of where we are going to with this. Um, because either it's like ghosting, right? Um, we might not get that email back or there will be misleading information. So I will say we should put action and effort where we are seeing that we're going to get the most value from. Um, so we need to know what's the door to knock, what's where we're going to put that effort in that email and how we're going to do that follow up. Everything Perfect. is not an option, I will say. Always remember that everything is not an option. And sometimes we we want certain things and the doors don't open on that time that we want, but sometimes they are not meant to be open or they will open whenever we're ready. Perfect. Thank you for sharing, Bianca. And we, uh, we have a comment from Cindy on the chat. Um, but I did not know about the other AI since I'm hesitate to find other ones that work just as well. Thank you, Cindy. I think that um, this is the thing. The, the more you practice, the more you will feel in, in, in tune of using it. Um, and what I have seen, people get married, let's say, with, with certain um, tools. And it will depend what works better for you um, and what type of patience you have. I like ChatGPT, but um, sometimes I like to, you know, make my own sentences and, and things, but I need a little bit of a push in a different, you know, tone. That's why I go to quick tools. I think I have even the paraphraser open always in my cell phone. Um, and the only thing with quick tools, it doesn't recognize as, as sometimes Spanish. So what I do is I go to one of these, um, tools, AI, and then I go to Google translate. I translate again and double check with Grammarly. So you might go like, oh my God, that's a lot of work, but it still simplifies me. Um, and it gives me time. So whatever works for you guys, right? Um, I wanted to quickly um, share here, if anyone is interested, okay, um, they don't pay me for this, but last week I received an email from Google and Google now has, has a course um, that analyzes data and they're working with how to get AI skills on Google AI Essentials, okay? So it's a course that is um, through Coursera I think it costs about $49 um, and you get information and knowledge in AI. I think that's a great asset, okay? Because it doesn't matter that we're all in different industries, we should know how to use AI. Um, and if we have a certificate from Google, I bet that that will work, okay? 
Um, so I wanted to, to share that with you. I want to close today with this phrase, and it says, a well-timed elevator pitch can turn a stranger into a friend, a skeptic into a believer. So the first believer is you in yourself. That's why you want to brand yourself. So you need to let others know and um, for them to be part of that journey with you. So I want to thank you for your time. Um, I want to thank you for the takeaways that you have shared with me. If you want to watch the TED, you can go to YouTube. Um, and just write my name, TEDx, Bianca Negron, TEDx Talk, and you'll get the um, the information there. And I also have a podcast and a book in Spanish, and it's about employability, right? Um, how we can have stability in an unstable job market. So thank you. Let's connect. If we're not connected through LinkedIn or social media, um, let's connect. And later on, let me know how AI went um and which one you like or any other new ones i always try new ones okay so share that with me